My name's Dom. I'm a queer, non-binary, intuitive activist creator. I love creating and truly fascinated by the creative nature of human souls. And I find that it does me good to think about how the choice of our actions influence the future. Dreaming up a new world is the only way that I stay sane and hopeful in a place that sometimes feels so disconnected and filled with neglect. We are inherently creative beings and we can choose what kind of future we want to create. Ever since I was a little squidge, I've been attracted to almost everything performing arts. I joke that I pretty much came out the womb a dancer. As soon as I could walk, I was prancing around my granny's kitchen, testing out art gallery floors for their slip, slide and spin factor and totally missing the paintings on the walls. My dad had to endure my triple time steps before he'd even had his morning cup of tea. But I just, I, it's like I couldn't help it. I loved dancing. It was my soul's way of expressing. And I think on reflection, probably a way to enter into flow, lose myself and meditate out of my worries. One of my most repeated memories, you know, the ones that, you get told that you experienced and you, if you remember it or if it's just because somebody has told you over and over again. But one of my most repeated memories was when I was first taken to the Hippodrome at age four to see Giselle, the ballet. Apparently I was so engrossed in the magic of it all that I thought it was real. At the end of act one, when the prima ballerina dies, I was, completely and utterly inconsolable. I also loved singing and songwriting. I was lucky enough to sing in a gospel choir led by a beautiful man called Everton. He showed me some awesome music and taught me how to harmonize. And well, that was it, I was hooked. I would spend all of our road trips trying to fly the third above every single song. <laughs> My poor mum, it wasn't always successful, obviously. I wrote lyrics as I walked through the allotments on the way home from school, and I even wrote my GCSE drama piece in my dreams. When I finally found myself in the business 10 years later, after three intense and somewhat harsh years in musical theatre school, I entered into what I experienced as a toxic and destabilising roller coaster ride. As with so many areas of life, I believe that the ways of the entertainment industry no longer serve us and that we desperately need to rework and rethink the systems that we've created. My creative expression and direction was inevitably influenced by these systems, as well as the specific culture that I was brought up into. For the most part, I experienced teachers and disciplines that wanted me to learn how to do it like them versus learning how to be more like me. Sometimes I wonder what it would have been like if I had learned how to dance like me, to sing like me and to explore and play in a way that lit up my soul and helped me feel free. As an overachiever, a people pleaser, a perfectionist that felt like they were ne never enough, I overworked, became totally obsessed, injured myself multiple times, didn't allow for the correct healing time and eventually ran out of steam. My body is still paying the price of my actions. When I was about 20, I decided to make the move from musical theater into straight acting, which just basically intensified the rejection and difficulty. The UK has a tendency to pigeonhole performers into certain categories, which is incredibly limiting, as you can imagine. For me, it certainly wasn't the easiest of transitions. 
But eventually I got a little role in an episode of a TV show, an indie film and a hair advert that temporarily saved me. <laughs> Ironic now that I don't have any hair. <laughs> then, just when I thought I had finally caught my big break and I was cast in a Marvel movie, I did one of my most challenging injuries to date. A series of unfortunate and traumatic events, which is very much a story for another day, resulted in a swift decline into a shell of my former self. I was so insecure that even when I landed what some might call my actual big break, Winona Earp, I was convinced that it was a mistake adamant that I was going to be fired and sent back to England. I was completely tormented by the voices in my head that told me that, that punished me for not knowing certain things, told me that I was stupid, ugly, and never, ever, ever, ever enough. I believed that I had to wear certain clothes, do my makeup a certain way, and fit the sexy young actress box if I wanted to be loved and accepted. It's no surprise though, really, coming from a business that led me to believe that if I cut my hair, I would be less desirable and therefore less hireable. And that I needed to cozy up to the producers and the people in power if I wanted to succeed. 2017, my mental health was at an all time low. And I decided that I either needed to find a way to understand my demons more intimately so that I could work with them, or I needed to change career paths altogether. That was when I enrolled myself in a 10 day Vipassana meditation course and everything changed. It was in Cambodia, I forgot to mention that. In that retreat, I was handed the key to my happiness but under one condition, I had to be the one to open the door. The following four years have been an unfolding into the unknown, coming face to face with my deepest fears and coming home to who I really am. I've been lucky enough to travel across India, Brazil and North America, listening deeply and allowing spirit to guide and show the way. As I'm sure was the case for many of us, it was during COVID when I was finally forced to slow down that I realized the importance of committing to my personal healing. The pain in my body was only getting worse and I knew that I needed to focus on finding the source of the discomfort in my being. The universe seemed to agree, as it often does, and when I was given the opportunity to live with a breathwork facilitator for five months, I knew I had to say yes. Through the breath, I have understood the core of some of my biggest wounds, and it continues to be such an important teacher in my life. Breathwork has helped me to see the masks I had been wearing as protection so deeply scared of not fitting in to what I thought I had to be. During these five months out west, two psilocybin and an ayahuasca ceremony presented themselves. Having lived in ayahuasca communities in Brazil, I'd learned much about the medicine. Clear intention is crucial. So I thought long and hard about what my highest self needed to call in. What eventually came through was total self-acceptance and freedom of expression. Well, <laughs> I had no idea what would follow. <laughs> A very fast unraveling and unveiling of my non-binary truth. A week or so after ceremony, I knew I had to shave my head and get rid of anything that no longer felt like me. I had to strip everything back to remember who I was underneath. Who I was before the conditioning, before the media force fed me beliefs and before the acting began. You see, I don't wanna act anymore. I wanna create, yes, absolutely. I want to create 
and play and explore and see how I can best show up and be of service in this lifetime. I'd love to tell stories and represent those that need it most if it's on my path. But when I'm off screen, navigating this already confusing world, I can no longer pretend that I'm someone I'm not. So I'm currently living in my 1986 BW camper van, unsure of where my roots will be planted. And yet, ironically, I've never felt more at home. My name is Dom. I am a queer, non-binary, gender fluid, human being, and becoming. I am a creator, an intuitive, an activist, a love warrior, a water protector, and a wave maker. But most importantly, I'm the most me I've ever been.